Well, the sermon today is about kindness, which on one level seems trivial. When in the last week there have been three more mass shootings in the United States. Obviously, something is seriously, seriously wrong in our country. And we are reminded again and again that ideas influence words and motivate actions for good or for evil. So let's listen to some important words from the Lord that come to us through the prophet Zechariah. In Zechariah chapter 7 and verses 9 and 10, it sums up how kindness looks in thinking, in speech, and in behavior, in words that we are wise to heed. Thus says the Lord of hosts, render true judgments, show kindness and mercy to one another. Do not oppress the widow, the orphan, the alien, or the poor, and do not devise evil in your hearts against one another. We can all ponder how well each of us is doing these things as an individual, as well as how we're doing them as a nation. If ever there was a time when more kindness is needed, it's right now. This is our fifth Sunday on the Fruit of the Spirit. How are you doing? Are you seeing growth in the garden of your life? of love and joy and peace and patience? That's not my, like Bruce Springsteen says in Santa Claus is coming to town, that's not many, that's not many. How can you tell if there is growth? Can anybody else tell if there's growth? On Wednesday I had to have blood drawn in preparation for my annual physical, which is in four weeks, and as I was sitting there in the chair, I know, okay, they're going to take my blood, and they're going to check it for sugar and cholesterol and a host of other things. And, and I thought, you know, it would be really cool if we could check for the fruit of the Spirit in a similar way. You know, if you could just sit down, and they could stick you with something, and then pull it out, and then let you know, well, we've got your report. The good news is your joy and peace are in range, but your patience is extremely low, <laughs> and your kindness definitely needs a boost. Well, as with so many of the fruit of the Spirit, kindness is greatly needed in our communities and in our society. Kindness is the quality of being friendly, generous, considerate, and treating people with respect. The opposite of kindness is someone behaving in a way that is mean, selfish, rude, disrespectful, or obviously violent. Kindness is often quiet and behind the scenes. Those who are unkind are often loud, obnoxious, insulting, and demeaning of other people. Obviously, someone who acts like that on a regular basis is lacking in kindness, the fruit of the Spirit, and the presence of Christ in his or her life. Now, in years past, I can remember seeing a bumper sticker that said, practice random kindness and senseless acts of beauty. Does anyone remember that bumper sticker? That was back in a time when we were trying to be a kindler, gentler nation. I don't see it as much anymore. Do you? What is meant by random acts of kindness? Well, one example was the owner of a drive through coffee shop who was surprised one morning to have one of her customers not only pay for her own beverage, but for the car behind her. And when the next car came up, that person was pleasantly surprised to find out that their coffee had already been paid for and paid for the coffee of the car behind her. And this went on over and over for over two hours and 27 customers. 
One stranger paying for another. A string of kindness. Some of us who are old can remember a movie that came out in the year 2000 called Pay It Forward with Haley Joel Osment and Helen Hunt as his mother. Haley Joel Osment was a junior high school student and the film shows the exponential impact of a few acts of kindness done with nothing asked in return except that the beneficiary do something kind for somebody else and keep the acts of kindness going, that they pay it forward. Well, God doesn't call us just to random or occasional acts of kindness, but God calls us to intentional, purposeful kindness as just a routine part of our everyday living as followers of Jesus Christ. God wants us to go about every single day of our life, with our eyes open and our ears attuned to opportunities to practice kindness, to be friendly and generous, considerate and respectful towards other people. Think for a moment, if someone were to ask you, what are some of the first words that come to your mind when you think about God? What are some of those first words that come to your mind? And I think people think of words like powerful or mighty or holy or loving. I wonder how many of us would say kind is one of the first things we think of when we think of God. And yet Psalm 145 verse 17 says, The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. God's posture toward us, and not just when we behave well, is one of kindness. Now, for many of us, it's easier to be kind to people who are grateful and kind in return. And you all know that part of your spirit, when you do something kind for someone and they don't express appropriate gratitude as far as you're concerned, and then you realize in your heart and your spirit, well, my motives were completely wrong because I didn't actually do this out of the goodness of my heart. I wanted them to be really thankful that I was so nice and kind. Oops. But you know, it's harder to be kind to people who behave badly or who act like disobedient children. But in the Bible, God is frequently portrayed as kind to us even in those times. In Hosea chapter 11 and verse 4, God is lamenting like a loving parent over the refusal of God's people to live God's way. And Hosea, God speaking through the prophet, says, I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them as those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. Hosea asserts that kindness is part of who God is and how God acts, even when we're unaware of it, even when we don't appreciate it. In the New Testament, of course, we hear Jesus describe how kind God is, especially in Luke 6, verses 35 and 36, for example. Think of, as David said so eloquently to start our service, think if everyone who considers themselves a Christian in our country actually did what Jesus says just in these two verses and forgot the whole rest of the New Testament. Jesus says, but love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. In the passage that Marilyn read so well for us from Romans chapter 2, Paul tells the church, or do you despise the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience? Do you not realize that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? Paul is asserting that God is kind to us in the hope that we will stop living selfishly and turn our lives over to God's kind and loving guidance, and direction. And as followers of Christ, we're called to imitate and embody the kindness of God. 
And part of growing in Christ's likeness is that we're kind to others even when they're not kind to us. That's a mark of Christian spiritual maturity. The Apostle Paul ex explains how this contrasting behavior looks in our lives in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 12 and 13. When reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we speak kindly. This is how a true and genuine follower of Christ acts and speaks. Well, even if we're operating from selfish motives, so you can be somebody who's like, well, I don't believe anything that you've said so far. I don't believe in God. I don't think God's kind and everything else. Well, even if you're just a basic, selfish, sinful human being, the Bible says it's wise for you to be kind. Proverbs eleven seventeen states, those who are kind reward themselves, but the cruel do themselves harm. Brittany Feldot noted in a recent sermon how researchers have learned that those who gave love, either through volunteering or random acts of kindness or financial giving, what they call pro-social behavior or altruism, had improved health outcomes. In fact, in many cases, they outweighed the benefits of those who received the act of kindness. A variety of studies have noted that kindness stimulates the production of serotonin, which is a source associated with happiness and produces endorphins. And we all remember, as L. Woods tells us in Legally Blind, that endorphins make you happy, right? And they are the body's natural painkiller. It reduces the amount of cortisol, the hormone that's associated with stress in our bodies. Kindness is also related to releasing oxytocin, which helps lower our blood pressure. And some studies found that participating in random acts of kindness just for a month led to fewer symptoms of severe anxiety. So kindness and generosity led to reduce pain, increased happiness, decreased stress, and decreased blood pressure. So, if you want to get better, start being kinder and more gentle and more generous. And if that wasn't enough, studies have also found that kindness can prevent the acceleration of aging at the cellular level. That is, kindness actually protects people from early death. So practicing kindness, it usually results in our feeling better physically, and it also leads to us feeling better about ourselves, because we've brightened somebody else's day. We've helped to lighten their burden. We've given them some hope. Now, I don't think it's a coincidence that patience and kindness are next to each other in the fruit of the Spirit. And Paul actually connects them multiple times in many other passages, such as when he's commending his ministry team and their qualities in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verses 6 and 7, and he's talking about his team and their purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. In, first Corinthians, in, first, in Colossians 3.12, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4, love is patient and love is kind. Right? Even pastors and teachers are admonished in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24, to remember that the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome but kindly to everyone. An apt teacher, patient. You know, throughout my life, growing up in a pastor's family as a kid, and in almost 30 years now as a pastor, my family and I have been the beneficiaries of incredible kindness and generosity and love by countless Christians. Just in the last few weeks, people have done many, many kind things for us, from sending us cards to giving us vegetables, flowers, fish, cookies, 
taking us fishing, and it touches us deeply. And we're very thankful and grateful to you and grateful to God for all of your loving kindness. I mean, the thing about kindness is it doesn't have to be expensive, right? It doesn't have to be elaborate, although it can be. But it doesn't have to... <laughs> I'm not inviting something, I'm just saying. <laughs> if you want to send us to Europe, no. Um, the, th the thing about kindness is it can be as simple as just committing to helping our neighbor right next door, sending a note, making a phone call, making some cookies, making a meal, sharing some time, offering some physical assistance. The list is endless. William Barclay, who was a Scottish minister and author, wrote, more people have been brought into the church by the kindness of real Christian love than by all the theological arguments in the world. And more people have been driven from the church by the hardness and ugliness of so-called Christianity than by all the doubts in the world. We don't have to be theological giants to practice kindness. We just have to speak and act kindly on a consistent basis to all people at all times, on, whether we're in person, on social media, whatever the context. Many times in the Bible, when the word kindness or kind is mentioned, it's specifically used in reference to the poor, to those who may need kindness more than others. In Proverbs chapter 14, in both verse 21 and 31, we hear these words of warning. Those who despise their neighbors are sinners. Could that be any more clear? Those who despise their neighbors are sinners, but happy are those who are kind to the poor. Those who oppress the poor insult their maker, but those who are kind to the needy honor him. It's hard for Jill and myself to believe that we have been married for 30 years now. And way back in another century when we were young, we were in England, and we were in London in the theater district going to a show, and after the show ended around 11 p.m., and all the theater go goers poured out into the sidewalks in the street, and as we came out, we saw a man kind of stagger into a table and fall to the ground. And as we got closer, the man picked himself up again, managed a few steps, and then went down hard on the bricks again. And meanwhile, hundreds of people were coming out of the theater and then parting around him and then continuing on their way. And we approached him, and he was bleeding a little bit from his fall, and we asked him if he needed help. And through his accent and his drunkenness, we managed to figure out that he wanted to get back to an underground station called Piccadilly Circus. And so we got him to his feet, and I wrapped my arm around him to steady him, and the three of us began walking to the nearest underground stop. And we clearly must have made quite a picture, two young, nicely dressed Americans, and this poor, dirty, and quite aromatic street person, because even though the sidewalk the escalator down to the underground and the train platform were jam-packed with people. They parted like the Red Sea for us <laughs> as we came, and either because they saw or smelled us coming. <laughs> and we got some very interesting looks from people, and not all of them kind. And on the train, the man was expressing his gratitude to us for our kindness and said he wanted us to meet his friends. And I have to confess, I was a little bit nervous about that prospect. And we got off the stop at Piccadilly Circus, and we took the up escalator. And as we came off the escalator, as we were stepping off, this man saw us coming. And he started walking toward us with this kind of concerned, puzzled look on his face. And he asked us if we, Jill, if we were with a certain agency, and we said no. And he said, are you social workers? We said, no, we're Christians. And the man seemed both surprised and relieved. 
And meanwhile, our new friend was introducing us to his friends, a group of about eight to ten street people who were all sitting against a wall in a corner of the train station. And they thanked us gratefully with smiles all around for bringing their friend back to them. And in an act of great kindness on their part, they offered us a drink from their bottle of wine. Which was all they had to give or to share. And I thought about in that moment how Jesus took wine. And after giving thanks, he gave it to his friends and all of them drank from it. And it truly was an act of communion on their part. And there was a special feeling about that whole experience that Jill and I shared that we've never forgotten and never will forget. And all we tried to do was to be kind to a man who needed help. And he and his friends offered their kindness in return. Mother Teresa wrote, We will never know all the good a smile can do. We speak about our God who is good, merciful, and compassionate. Are we a living token of that reality. Those who suffer, can they perceive in us that goodness, that forgiveness, that living understanding? May no one ever come to you without going away better and happier. Everyone should see Kindness in your face, in your eyes, your smile. Sometimes we think or feel that some spiritual things are beyond us or we just don't get them. You know, people will tell me, I can't read the Bible, it's too complicated, I don't understand it. We look at someone we respect like a Mother Teresa and we say, I could never do what she did. But the beauty of kindness is it, it doesn't take any formal education. It doesn't take any specific training. It doesn't take any expensive preparation. It simply requires being kind. And kindness often leads to more kindness. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness. God has told us what is good. And what does the Lord require of us but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with our God? Let's pray. Oh God, in the midst of the toxic swirl of social media, of hatred and fear of others and those who are different than ourselves. Oh God, we pray that you would help us to be instruments of your kindness in all of our relationships, everywhere we go. Oh God, how our world needs Christians who are sharing the spiritual fruit of kindness. Help us to be those people, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.